Hello guys. In this session, let's talk about the topics multi fingers, multipliers, and contacts. Many times you may have come across the trans uh, the uh, designers using the concept of uh, multi fingers. Okay, let's understand what is its importance and uh, how it helps in designing. Similar is the case with multipliers. So when do we go for multipliers? How it helps the designers? How it helps from the layout point of view? And also let's try and understand how important it is for us to use the contacts. So what exactly is a contact? Okay, let's try uh, one by one and uh, let's try and understand what exactly are these things. Okay, so moving on to paint over here. So just assume that you have, uh, I've just kept uh, some raw data over here, you know, kind of pictures to help me uh, do the drawing here. Assume that you have got a large transistor over here. Okay. It has got, uh, let me use a lighter color here. Every transistor, say just assume that this is uh, 15 microns. Let me take a different color. This is 15 microns wide from top to bottom. Okay. So we know that every uh, the poly has got a very high resistance. Okay. So any metal, say default, any metal, whatever you draw is nothing but a series resistor in connection. Let's have this analogy in mind. Okay. So whenever you have draw any piece of metal, it is a uh, bunch of series resistors connected one after the other. So similarly, if at all you have a transistor of bigger width, like let's say for example 15 microns, we can consider it this as a bunch of series resistor. Okay. Let me just draw this here. Something like this. Okay. So what happens is, say for example, you have drawn an inverter <clears throat> using 15 microns wide. Okay. Using these two transistors, you have drawn an inverter. Now your circuit designer and comes and tells you, okay, your inverter is working fine, but can you make it more faster? Okay. So what would you do? As, as a layout person, what should your approach be? You've already done a layout of an inverter, which is, you know, a 15 microns PMOS and NMOS like this. But for some reason, the designer comes and says, okay, this is working fine. Uh, from the layout side, can you make it more faster? So as a layout person, what you would be doing is you will break this down into smaller pieces. Okay. So whatever the technology, minimum uh, width the technology allows you, you can go for it. Or you can go for an exact multiple of whatever the transistor is. So what we do, do here, over here is let's break this down into three pieces. Okay. So I have done it into three, like each of five micron wide. So if I have to say what is happening over here, let me just come back to this. So this whole thing defines the area of the source. This whole thing defines the area of the drain. Okay, 15 microns. Now when I'm breaking this down into three small pieces, what's happening over here is I'm sharing the sources and drains over here. Okay, source, drain, source, drain. Just for example, okay. We have a lot more better ways of sharing it, but just for, for the sake of uh, explanation, I have made a connection like this. So what's happening over here is this large area of source and drain is broken down into small pieces. Okay. It's come down to one third of the whole area of your source and drain. Same thing implies to the gate as well. We know that the gate resistance is almost around 60 to 80 times more than a normal metal. Okay. So, but if at all you are breaking it down into small pieces, you are reducing the gate resistance over here. Here you have a bunch of series resistors. Here what you have done is you have broken it down into three parallel resistors. Because you are going to connect all the gates and sources together. Right? So, obviously the parallel three resistors will give a total resistance is going to be much lesser than one large uh, device. Okay. So thereby, what are we achieving here by doing multi-fingering? We are basically, we are reducing the area. Okay. We are reducing the area of this 
we are reducing the uh, poly resistance. Okay, we are reducing the source and drain uh, cap here. Okay, the device cap is reduced. Okay, and because of all of these three things, obviously area is less. Your drive strength will improve because your cap drain cap is much much smaller over here. Okay, so that's the main advantage to go for multi fingers. Okay, so now why do you think the designers have this concept? They can go for m is equal to uh, three, or you know, why why would they go for nf number of fingers? You know, number of fingers nf denotes number of fingers is equal to three, and uh, m uh, defines the multipliers. Okay, when a designer is using nf is equal to three, right? When you're doing a layout, when you generate a layout. This is what you get one diffusion with three fingers on it. Okay. So, over here, if you just say uh, M is equal to three, and when you generate devices, this is what you are going to get three individual uh, devices over here. Okay. Now, coming back to this, so if the designer would have used M is equal to three, right, as a layout person, as a layout guidelines or the practice, it is always good for a layout designer to share the devices because of all these three reasons. It is going to impact all these three parameters over here. But for some reason, how should a circuit designer get to know the impact? Because he wouldn't know, right? Whether you're going to uh, share the devices or no, whether you're going to share it this way or you're going to keep it separately, right? Because keeping separately the devices has its own uh, different impacts over here. Right. Say, for example, if at all you have kept these three uh, devices over here, right? So, and now you have got this scenario as well, wherein you've got all the three shared. So, what do you think is there in between these two devices? Here, sorry, let me put it across this way. Three devices, three fingers, I mean, what is over here in this region? We have something called as STI, right? After this, that's that's what when you have multiple devices, when you have a space between two devices, there will be a STI layer between them, right? Now, if I'm splitting three transistors, I have a STI here, I have a STI here, I have a STI here. Even though even though I'm splitting them apart equally, right? what happens if STI is there? Okay, shallow trench isolation layer is there. It would add stress to the transistors, right? Adding stress means you're impacting the mobility of the charge carriers. If the mobility changes, transconducting changes. If that changes, again, the threshold voltage changes. There's a kind of chain reaction happening over here, right? So that is why we tend to avoid Keeping, if at all, if it's the same device, same thing which is being connected, it is always advisable to share the sources and drains. And even though the designer has put M is equal to 3, even though the designer has put multiple devices, it is always a good practice to share the sources and drains because of these three advantages over here. And along with that as well, the resistance, the voltage, the functioning, the threshold voltage, all these factors play a very important uh, role over here. Okay, so that's about a brief uh, explanation about what is uh, using, what is uh, the importance of going for a multi-finger device and a multiple device. In some cases, keep in mind, in some cases, uh, the designer might want you to split the devices like this. Ideally, this is the default case, but in some cases, the designers might want you to split the devices equally, okay? And they will say, okay, add a dummy over here on this side and this side, okay? So why? Because they would want the stress to be distributed evenly, okay? So it could be any circuit, okay? It, it depends on the designer's call. Once they run the simulation, they would say very rare it happens. Ideally, we go with these kind of uh, scenarios. If at all the designer wants the devices to be split across individually, okay, spaced apart equally, so that the stress is uh, utilized all across, 
in very rare cases we have seen the designer expects you to do this as well okay so that's about the concept of going for multi fingering and multiples okay so that's the advantage of all of that now let's see what is a contact over here okay so we know that okay okay what's a contact well, let me just draw it over here Let me draw another little here and I will go with a different color. Okay. Assume that I have drawn a, a contact here. Okay. Let me take a different color here. This is my M1 and this is my M2. Okay. So what do you think is between here, between two metals? That is the ILD. Inter layer dielectric so what is a contact a contact is a hole created in the ild layer to form a connection between the top metal and the lower metal i repeat contact is a kind of hole which is created whenever you draw a contact that gives an indication to the fabrication tool that it needs to create a hole in that region okay uh, in the interlayer dielectric such that the above metal forms a connection through that hole. It's the same metal too. Okay. Because all of them are same metals, right? It is forming a connection over here. Okay. We know that every metal, as I said, is a nothing but a, a resistance. So, I, I consider this as one wire or one contact is one resistance, right? This is the thing of forming connection. Now, if at all, I add, now see for LVS purpose, if at all you have to make a connection, right, you can just go ahead with this. You have a device here. Let me just clear this up. It's kind of a messy. Let me just go to the new uh, thing itself. Don't save. So you have a, a connection over here. There's a metal here. If at all, you're drawing only one contact. Okay. For LVS purpose, this might be fine. For LVS purpose, this might be fine. But do you think this is going to be uh, suffice the connection over here? The answer is no. So why? Because going back to the previous example there. Okay. I'll just draw redraw quickly the same thing again. This is here, this is here, and let me draw this guy here. One contact, one contact, the ILD, ILD, interlayer dielectric, this is M2, this is M1, and this is a hole here. Okay, so I repeat, M2 contact is nothing but a hole created in the ILD layer so that the connection happens from M2 to M1. So this is okay for LVS purpose. But what is the reliability factor of having only one contact connection? So that's the reason we go for multiple contacts over here. Okay, which means what? Having more contacts here. Okay, your source and drain. That's why your designers, your leads will always keep telling you, always use as many contacts as possible. Why? that will reduce the resistance when you make a try to make a connection from your metal to your diffusion or from your metal to your metal one to your diffusion or from metal one to metal two whether you are connecting it from a device uh, from a metal one to the device or between any two metals so if i have to say this guy here is one series connection if i'm drawing another contact which means i'm connecting another resistor in parallel three resistors in parallel is always better than one right which means what? I am creating three paths, three different paths for the metal connection to happen over here. Right? So, thereby the resistance reduces and it forms a very strong and good connection. Same thing, this is between the metals. This is from the metal to the diffusion or to the device. Okay. Now, you may ask me like, okay, you've got bigger metal over here and there's another metal over here. 
pin and I will draw a, a bigger one here, wider. Okay. So earlier, when we uh, were doing uh, layouts in the earlier days, we did not have this rule of uh, adding more uh, wires. Okay. So what we tend to do is, depending on the width, you need to decide the number of wires you have to put. Okay. So if at all you are using a wider metal and a, a thinner metal. So whatever is the capacity over here, you need to add the wires to improve the connection. Now this comes under the category of reliability. Okay, So you never know while fabricating, assume that if you just put only one contact, if that doesn't work, right, you might end up creating a open over there. So as a reliability factor, it is always better to add more contacts. It's not only reliability as well as better conductivity as well. At least one will work. If one is not working, at least one will work, right? So now, what happens when you are uh, trying to connect two wider pieces of metal, okay? You will add more contacts. I'm sorry, I'm not drawing it in the single line. I'm just trying to show you the main purpose over here, which means what? Six contacts is better than two. So here, just to make a connection between these two metals over here, only one wire is more than enough. But I'm adding more wires over here for better con uh, conductivity. Again, the same principle. Which means there are six parallel resistors over here. Which means these are six paths which are going down to form a connection. Okay. So these things earlier they were not decoded in the rule deck. But these days we get in the form of, uh, these are coded in the rule deck itself. Stating that if at all you are using a certain metal with a particular width. And if you are trying to connect it with a, another metal of a certain bit, it is mandatory that you should have that many wires. Else it will throw you a DRC error. Okay. So it's always that is uh, slightly trying to add the reliability factor as well, uh, you know, to the layout guys so that you make a proper connection over here. Okay. So that's the... Uh, whole explanation about what is multi-fingers, what is multipliers, what's the importance of going for um, multipliers and multi-fingers and uh, what are contacts and what is the importance of that. Okay, so that's all for this session. Thank you.